2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 First let me just say to you Peter followed up his first letter with a second because of false teachers who were disrupting the church he urged his readers to become firmly grounded in their faith and character As you listen to this letter reflect on your commitment to becoming mature in your faith and take encouragement as you live in the hope of Jesus certain return Second Peter chapter 1 verse 1 Simon Peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Let's talk about making one's calling and election sure. Being sure, in other words. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ but if anyone does not have them he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins therefore my brothers be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's talk of prophecy and scripture or prophecy of scripture. So I will always remind you this is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love and with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. 
Above all, you must understand, listen, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Let's talk of false teachers and their destruction. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. I'm at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 again. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its godly people but protected, Protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men, for them, for that righteous man, listen, if he did not Let me say it again. If he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold them or hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. In other words, if God rescued Lot, who definitely went through trials of lawless men, you can imagine what they said about him and how they treated him and how they did him. God allowed him to go through that. If this is so, which it is, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. Continuing their punishment. They're in punishment now, the ungodly. The godly are not in punishment, they're in trials. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the sinful nature and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander celestial beings, yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not bring slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. They don't. But these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like brute beasts, creatures of instinct born only to be caught and destroyed and like beasts they too will perish these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand they are like brute beasts creatures of instinct born only to be caught and destroyed and like beasts they too will perish they will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done 
Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed. What do you think is going to happen to their souls? They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Beor, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his wrongdoings by a donkey, a beast without speech, who spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. Listen, these men are springs without water and mist driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. For they mouth empty, boastful words and by appealing to the lustful desires of sinful human nature, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They entice the people that are just coming to the Lord. See, They promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. That means if they know the Lord, if someone introduces them, this is my understanding, if someone introduces them to the Lord and they follow the Lord, and they learn what the Lord is saying to them, and they have relationship with the Lord, and then they go back to being a heathen? <laughs> if they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them, the proverbs are true. A dog returns to its own vomit and a sow that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud.